Hey humans, Gus Rickard here for another Facebook Live episode eight. Today we'll be talking about health and fitness uh, and what the difference is um, and which one are you choosing or are you really smart and you're doing, you're doing both. So health and fitness are two, two related but very different topics. Um, they're kind of bunched together a lot nowadays but they're, they're completely different. So health is a kind of a confused thing. Hey Roger, hey Cam, welcome guys. Good, good topic for both of you two today. Um, hey Casey, welcome. Yeah, so we, we've kind of been confused a lot about health in, in the last, you know, hundred years or so as, as our environment has changed so rapidly. We've got really confused definitions of health as well. I looked a few of them up on the internet and one of them I found is kind of scary, which is the state of being free from injury or illness or the state, the state of being free from symptoms and disease. And this, this uh, particular definition went on to say your doctor should be responsible for your health, which I think is the most unhealthy definition of health you can possibly have. The World Health Organization has a bit of a better definition of health which is health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the, the absence of disease or infirmity. Sorry, just, just checking my notes there to make sure I get it right. So that's, that's kind of a better definition of health. I would add uh, to that physical, mental, and social well-being, spiritual well-being as well, um, that it's very important for human beings to, to have healthy, empowering beliefs about uh, what we are, how we got here, what happens after we we die. Um, I would <clears throat> go on to say that, that fitness is a very different thing. Fitness is the quality of being suitable uh, to fulfill a particular role or task. So fitness is your ability to get something done. Um, fitness will vary from one person to the other you know if you if you play soccer or if you're a sprinter um, you're going to have very different fitness needs from somebody who who um, just you know is, is a parent and doesn't have any um, doesn't have any any real athletic needs you know fitness is very specific to that whereas health is a more a more holistic thing a couple of other definitions I want to I want to just bring to everybody's attention here is homeostasis. So homeostasis is the 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 um, ability for the body to spring back to to balance, um, and allostasis. Well, actually, I should read these properly. So homeostasis is the tendency of the body to seek and maintain a condition of balance or equilibrium within its internal environment, even when faced with external challenges. Um, Allostasis is the process of achieving stability or homeostasis through physi physiological or behavioral change. So homeostasis is basically our balance. Hey, Kurt. Hey, dude. Welcome. Um, so homeostasis is is physiological equilibrium. It's when when all the different systems of your body are in balance. Um, <clears throat> We can lose homeostasis and bounce back to homeostasis, and that's that's known as allostasis. So, an example is, uh, you know, it, I'm I'm just sitting here now. My heart rate is probably ten or so beats above basal. My my uh, my blood pressure will be above what my resting, you know, lying down blood pressure will be. There are, there is endocrine balance. I feel quite balanced in my system right now, so that so I know I'm in homeostasis. My my breath is at a, a quite a, a balanced rate. Um, I could I could get a fright right now. I could have to like I don't know there could be a fire alarm and have to run down the stairs and grab my shit, or there could be a fire and I have to get out the door and I'll lose homeostasis momentarily. But once I get outside and I start breathing naturally again and things calm down, I I bounce back to homeostasis. So that's known as allostasis. I, I maintain allostasis. Whereas somebody um, that's, that's out of really out of balance, um, you know, someone that has a very low level of health or vitality might run down these stairs, you know, because there's a fire and freak out and have a panic attack, and their heart rate's going a thousand miles an hour, breath rate is going through the roof, and they're they're not able to return to homeostasis, even though the 
the stressor of having to run downstairs and the, the stress of thinking that maybe there's a fire has gone. So that that is allostasis. So a few definitions there, health, uh, homeostasis, allostasis, and fitness. So fitness is the ability to get what you need to get done. You know, so the, the question shouldn't be, are you fit or is somebody fit, but are they fit for a particular task? Because um, if you, you know, back to the, the soccer player and sprinter and mum or crossfitter or, you know, yogi, they all have complete different needs as far as fitness is concerned. Um, you know, the, the question with fitness really is, is what you're doing uh, is your fitness or exercise regime actually getting you where you want to be? You know, a lot of people will go, uh, you know, want to lose weight and uh, want to lo- build muscle and they've got all this postural stuff going on and go and do a CrossFit class, you know, or, or people want to lose weight and go and do, a, uh, I don't know, a very yin, slow, hatha yoga class or something like that. And they're, they're good forms of exercise, but it might not lead to the correct outcome. So health is a, is a very general kind of thing, uh, whereas fitness is very specific. Um, with regard to health, I want to say that there are there, there are different levels of health as well. And I, and I think that we've, in my experience, where humanity or humans as a whole are losing or decreasing our level of health. We see like in recent years, um, levels of disease like chronic disease like cancer diabetes heart disease you know everything that we we hear so much about going through the roof we have neurodegenerative diseases like alzheimer's and parkinson's and dementia and stuff going through the roof like they, all these things are just at all-time highs now we have neurodevelopmental diseases in children like autism and adhd um, dyslexia, dyspraxia, things like that going through the roof. Mental health diseases like uh, like depression and anxiety and schizophrenia and stuff are all going through the roof. Um, I heard the other day watching watching this Human Longevity Project Summit that my generation now, I'm, I'm 33, so my generation will be the first generation where our life expectancy is longer than our kids. So our kids are actually going to have a, a shorter life expectancy than we are. So human health is not getting better. What what's happening is we're becoming more and more dependent on medicine and on pharmaceuticals and on on our the, on the world we've created. Um, I, I hear like a lot of the time people will argue that health is actually getting better than ever, and that when you look at life expectancy, it's better than ever, um, and that you know so called so called primitive people were like living in in squalor and had you know died when they were 35 and i don't know li- lived terrible lives like scavenging for food and stuff which is a lot of crap there's um a few examples that i that i want to use one one comes from uh, a guy called wilhelm stephenson who was a, an arctic explorer in the 1920s who went and lived with the eskimos for for years for four years and he was one of the first people to kind of confirm what is now known as the ketogenic diet, which you can survive pretty much on, on uh, fat and meat, you know, and more so on fat than, than meat. Uh, he, he ate the Eskimo diet for four years, which was 90% fat. They ate like seal blubber and fish, and that was, that was about it, really. Uh, and he said he, he had perfect health the whole time. But he, he uh, told stories of an Eskimo guy who would carry across the snow a day's trek with 50 kilos in each hand and 50 kilos held in his mouth you know that's 150 kilos this guy would carry walking through the snow there are other stories from early explorers before the spanish kind of got to the americas and introduced horses the the native american indians uh didn't have horses they were on foot and they used to chase down buffalo on foot and spear them you know you think about that it's a pretty amazing athletic feat to be able to chase down a buffalo they they spoke of them shooting arrows straight through a buffalo or straight through a bear like literally it coming out the other side just to give you 
an example of the the skill and accuracy and power of uh, of what these guys could do. Um, there was uh, Western A. Price, who in the 1930s went to all the different native groups all around the world, including the Australian Aborigines. And, and um, he told stories of the, the Aboriginal, the, native, the Indigenous Australian people being able to see with their bare eyes the moons of Saturn as they passed around, as they, as they came around. He could check with a telescope and and confirm that they were actually correctly seeing when the moons were coming around Saturn without any kind of telescope or anything like that. Um, there's a documentary I just watched recently called First Footprints about the history of indigenous Australians that go, goes back 70,000 years. And there's these fossilized footprints in the Northern Territory uh, with like dinosaur footprints and human footprints that kind of tells this story. So they got, they got some Aboriginal trackers to go and look at what had happened in this um, in this scenario, which was thirty thousand years old, and I think it was like it wasn't actually a dinosaur; it was it was like a, a giant emu or something that was being hunted by these three guys, three men. One of them only had one leg, and they 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 pointed out pointed out this first contact with the awesome documentary. I highly recommend it. You can see that this this one-legged dude's footprints are six meters apart. So he was keeping up with these other two hunters, chasing this giant emu and jumping six meters every stride. So that's that's pretty phenomenal athletic feat, right? Um, you'll notice in the the picture of the event here, I had a picture of Sitting Bull. Um, I don't have it here available, but you, if you look on that picture, you'll see this guy's jaw. And this is typical of all native people prior to uh, the Western agricultural diet. They have very big, healthy jaws, prominent cheekbones. They have a really even face. A, a healthy face has very typical geometric structure, which should be, you use the rule of thirds, it should be like from here, this is an anthropometric norm. From this part of your finger here to there should be a third of your face. So from your chin to the bottom of your nose, that from your, the bottom of your nose to there, you'll see I have a short middle third, which is typical of people on an agricultural diet that have, have been deficient in certain nutrients for a few generations. And then from there to there should be the final third. And you notice all these native people have very big, healthy structures and these very balanced, geometrically balanced faces um so my point is we don't we're not really uh we've kind of come pretty far from what is optimal health jiddu krishnamurti the the um was a, an indian mystic um who was who was uh made famous by the the theosophists um, and he said, it's no measure of health to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick society. He said that in the 1940s and no doubt since then that the health of our society has actually gotten worse. And it's no wonder, you know, we don't really give health any respect nowadays. We certainly give a lot of respect to fitness. Everybody wants to be, wants to be superhuman. You know, we have like CrossFit and uh, F45 and all these new fantastic ways of exhausting people. And, and not a great deal of respect for health. You ask the average person, you know, what health is, and they they don't really know. Like, you know, as long as as long as they're not in pain or sick, they haven't really given it a lot of thought. And it's sad that we have to give health so much thought nowadays. Like, ideally, we wouldn't have to think of health. But even the, even native people around the world, when they lived in an environment where they where they had access to healthy food and abundant sources of healthy food, they still ate things very carefully. You know, the the um, the Sioux, the uh, Lakota people in the in the states, um, they had this deliberation at every meeting they would have, which was that every well, they had a, a saying or something that every every um, deliberation they made. They had to take into account the effect that would have on the next seven generations of their of their people. You know, we don't have anybody making those kind of decisions for us nowadays. And if you look at the work of Weston A. Price, um, 
or Francis Pottinger from the 1930s, they, they proved what is happening now uh, was going to happen, which is, and, and why it's happening. And it's something people don't know that we are, we are um, our structures are changing. We're getting more and more uh, degenerated structure. You know, as I mentioned with Sitting Bull, he's got this big healthy jaw, enough room for all his teeth. Whereas it's super common nowadays to not get your wisdom teeth or to not have enough room for your wisdom teeth. And that's due to a deficiency in fat soluble vitamins, which are vitamin A, D and K2 that allow our structure to grow fully. Um, I find it, I find it really interesting that no one, no one really talks about this a lot. Um, and that we're, we're seeing so many problems due to physical and nutritional degeneration and not a lot is being done about it really. We're not, we're not really educated about food a lot and we have so much, um, so much debate still about what we should be eating and what we, what we shouldn't be eating. And we're still, there's, there's still so many food options and things that are marketed as healthy that are not really doing anything for our health. Hey, Eddie, <clears throat> welcome. Um, you know, there's like so many, so many supplements out there and now all these Psalms and like peptides and stuff that you can just order online that are meant to give you this quality and that quality. And no one really looking at, at the basics, you know, like the, the basic things that we do, like getting enough sleep, you know, drinking enough water and the right type of water, ha having a breathing practice and breathing properly, eating quality organic food that is matched to your body, you know, that we can only do through actually tuning in and listening and learning to listen to the signals of our body and learning to listen to what we need each moment. Um, where we've, we've kind of overridden that, that instinct with our intellect and the more that you read about diet and the more that you um, choose what to eat based on the intellect, the less that you will hear the signals from your body. Um, you know, having, having a, a proper healthy movement practice that is right for your body and getting to sleep on time, like these basic things are gonna do so much more for your health than, you know, all the, all the new supplements and peptides and everything like that. Um, so g'day Jeff, welcome mate. So, uh, yeah, so I wanted to, I wanted to mention, I, I listened the other day, I would really recommend this as well, the, the rewild yourself podcast There's an interview in one of the early episodes between Daniel Vitalis and Arthur Haynes, who's a taxonomist. And they're talking about the, by all, you know, Arthur, Arthur says that by all taxonomical definitions that human beings in our current state are no longer actually homo sapiens sapiens by all taxonomical definition we are a a, a domesticated subspecies of homo sapiens and they jokingly call us homo sapiens fragilis uh, and when we look at those disease rates and everything that i mentioned earlier we are we are becoming pretty fragile you know we're becoming more and more dependent on pharmaceuticals and on on life support when we're older and, and um, yeah, just pharmaceutical intervention really, rather than taking responsibility and doing the basic things and changing the things in your lifestyle that are gonna make a difference to your health and your longevity in the long term, you know? So back to, back to fitness and health. These two <clears throat> are not the same thing. They're, they're interdependent, but they're not the same thing. So health, I'd say fitness in the modern age is probably more dependent on health than health is on fitness. For example, if you, you want to have more energy, there's likely to be a lot you can do with your health that's going to give you a lot more energy um, than, than going and pushing yourself to get fitter. You know, the, you know, the first thing people do when they feel tired going, going up the stairs is to you know, think, oh, I better get fit, I better go and start jogging or I better go to the gym or something. That stuff helps, you know, movement is very important, but it's, it's more important to take care of your health first. Fitness is gonna deplete your body. And if you don't have adequate reserves of health, 
to support your exercise, <clears throat> uh, then you're, you're just going to deplete your system further. You know, this is the problem I have with all with, with all the, the new kind of fitness stuff I see out there is that most people are very depleted. I assess people very thoroughly and most people are very depleted. You know, most people have a huge deficit of sleep. Most people are nutrient deficient. And I am working with people who are, who are sick or in pain, so it's probably not a fair um, assumption to make about the general population. But I'm, I'm pretty sure that, that you know, there's, there's definitely room for improvement with most people out there. Um, except for some people who are just very, very luckily genetically gifted and have a lot of genetic momentum. Um, so fitness is, is very dependent on health and most people are depleted. Yeah, and I was, I was saying, so <clears throat> due to that depletion, having a, an exercise routine that it just exhausts people is not always suitable. You know, the, most people, for most people, being exhausted is actually going to be detrimental. You know, exercise is only beneficial when you can recover from it. <clears throat> it's a stressor and it's super compensation from that stressor that allows you to become fitter, that allows you to be more readily able to do the tasks that you need to do. G'day, Kylie. Welcome. Um, so I would, my advice to everybody would be focus on health first. Fitness is totally dependent on health. Health is less dependent on fitness, except for in the example of when you have, <laughs> thank you, didn't mention my um, my hair, Kylie. <clears throat> um, yeah, so fitness, fitness is more dependent on health than health is on fitness, except for in the example when somebody has a very demanding lifestyle. Like for example, if you get a job um, as a builder's labor and you've got to you've got to move 20 kilo tiles all day and there's 500 of them if your fitness is very low you know fitness being uh, the the interaction of, of the eight biomotor abilities which are strength speed power endurance flexibility coordination agility and balance if, so if you don't have the adequate biomotor abilities to get that job done, if you don't have the endurance to move 30, uh, to move 520 kilo tiles all day, if you don't have the flexibility to get down into the bottom position of that lift and your hamstrings are tight and pulling your back under so it's rounding, or if you don't have the strength to lift that that many times that you're, you're getting fatigued, that can start to damage your health. Uh, as, as it's just a huge stress on the body. But for most cases, health is going to support fitness a lot more than fitness is going to support health. Because nowadays our lives are, are relatively physically not very demanding compared to the, the lives of all the native people that I mentioned earlier. So fitness and health are interdependent. They're not the same thing. Um, <clears throat> when you're looking at fitness, you want to look at you, you, you want to ask the question, is this uh, practice or this exercise routine going to actually <clears throat> achieve the outcome that I want to achieve? You know, if you, if you want to lose weight or if you want to gain muscle or if you want to get better at basketball or soccer or sprinting or, you know, picking up tiles for work all day, you're going to have a very different regime, a different routine that's needed. And the, the, program needs to match uh, needs to match in, in a lot of different ways you need to have the right orthopedic profile for the for the given task I mean you need to have the the flexibility and mobility to do the movements that you want to do <clears throat> you need to look at the biomotor abilities which are as I said strength speed power endurance flexibility agility coordination and balance you know all of those aspects are going to change the uh, the outcome of the exercise, you know, lifting something heavy. If you if you want to run a marathon, you don't want to go and do heavy deadlifts. It's it's not going to help you. You know, if you want to play soccer better, you need to be looking at agility and coordination and balance and speed and endurance more than max strength. Whereas if you're an Olympic lifter, you need to be looking at maximum strength. <clears throat> if you want to lose weight or gain muscle like 
Uh, there, are, there are lots of different ways to do it, but you also really need to focus on the health. I would always, always focus on health first. Uh, make sure you've got the energy to recover from your fitness regime. Uh, make sure you're getting enough rest and uh, focus on health. So if anybody has any questions, shoot me them now. Um, I, I don't know, to, to elucidate my point a little bit more, the difference between fitness and health, because I gave some, some good examples of native people in the beginning who are really very healthy and extremely fit as well. And I also mentioned that we have the, all these disease rates that are going through the roof nowadays, so we're not very healthy as a population. <clears throat> we also have a lot of athletes that are very fit and not very healthy. Um, and one example is, is a basketball player called Derek Rose, who I was reading an article about the other day, who uh, was like the, one of the youngest rookies ever chosen for the NBA. He had one of the, his rookie year, he had one of the highest, he was one of the highest scoring rookies ever. He was like set to be one of the best players in the NBA ever. And after two seasons, he blew his knee and he had to take the rest of the season off and had surgery. And then he came back <clears throat> and he had another injury. I can't remember what it was. And over the next two or three seasons, he pretty much w was just racked with injury every day. And when, uh, you know, and he ended up get, being sold to another team. And so basically he's a guy who's incredibly talented, very fit for basketball, he was a good player, but had incredibly poor health. You know, it turned out that he had a Skittle machine in his bedroom. And he was just eating sugar all day and, and had no idea about nutrition or taking care of himself. And... Uh, yeah, an example of somebody who's fit and, and not very healthy. So my point is health is important. You know, fitness is important too. We tend to focus now on all the aesthetic things a lot more than the, the internal things, a lot more, a lot less on the things that really matter and that are going to matter to the health of our children and to generations to come. You know, <clears throat> We are handing on our genes. Each generation, we, our behavior, our thoughts, our uh, food choices, all affect uh, the genes that we hand on to our kids. And I think it's important to take care of those. So look at the foundations of health that I mentioned before, your thoughts, breathing, hydration, nutrition, movement, and rhythms. Those things, um, those things are the things in your life that you can control very easily that are going to have the greatest effect on health overall. And doing doing that is not micromanaging your health that we're so trained to do. It's not symptom control. It is truly health creation. And there is a big difference. Remember that symptoms and disease can't exist in a healthy body. You can't, you can't be healthy and have cancer at the same time. <clears throat> you can't be healthy and have any any kind of illness at the same time so rather than focus on symptoms focus on you know on decreasing symptoms focus on building health and only when you have a good level of vitality and you have a good level of health can you spend energy on getting fit because without that energy without that vitality your body won't be able to recover from your exercise rate uh, routine Remember as well that your exercise routine, if you want to be fit, if you want to get better at a given task, the outcome of the exercise has to match, excuse me, I need some water. Ah, excuse my jar. Um, G'day Chris, hey Lee J. welcome dudes. Yeah, the outcome, the outcome of your exercise has to match the desired outcome. Otherwise, you're not getting fitter. You're not getting fitter. You just you just spending energy, you know. And you don't have to exhaust yourself in a in a workout either. You know, the the idea of uh, of exercise is to get you better at the, those biomotor abilities, whether that's strength or endurance or whatever. But all, all of those things together, the idea is not to fatigue yourself. Fatigue. We don't want to train in fatigue. You don't want to tr train in a fatigued state. Fatigue leads to injury. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's me. Welcome Nat. Um, thanks for joining guys. I hope this was interesting. I feel like I've, 
I've gone off on a few tangents. I got a little bit lost on the way, but uh, I got through everything I wanted to say. I hope it was enjoyable and I'll see you all next time. Peace.